Hi everyone, this is Anna, one of your consumer technology specialists at Midcontinent Public Library. Today we are going to take a look at some more digital note-taking apps. If you've watched the other videos in this series, you will know that I have broken down note-taking apps into three categories. The first is the on-the-go apps that are probably already downloaded to your device. The second are hybrid apps that you can use for note-taking as well as a variety of things with the ability to use some sort of keyboard. And then the third type, which is what we are going to look at today, are the pen and paper apps. So these apps are going to try to replicate the experience of using a pen and paper to write your notes. And these apps are really going to work best if you have the ability to use an Apple Pencil or another smart stylus with them. You could use the very basic stylus and I will show you what that looks like, but to get the full effect and the full benefit out of these apps, it is helpful to have a more pen-like stylus. The first app that we're going to look at today is called GoodNotes, and you will actually find it in your app store called GoodNotes 6. And this app used to be available only for Apple devices, but with their sixth edition, they have made it available on Android devices as well. So I am going to locate GoodNotes on my iPad home screen, and then I'll just tap to open it. And with a free account, I can create three notebooks. So you can upgrade the app, and that would allow you to have an unlimited amount of notebooks. But as it is, we're just going to have options for three. And what we're looking at here is our Documents tab. I already have one notebook created, and I also have the option to start a new notebook by tapping on the plus sign. And then on the right side of my screen, I can use this circle check mark to select multiple notebooks and perform an action on all of them at once. And then this icon made of squares, I can use to change the layout of this page from grid to list. And then I would just tap it again to change it back. And then looking at the icons right above that in my upper right corner, the first one is a bell. And this is where we can find any notifications we receive. And then the gear icon is where I can access any of my app settings. On the left side of my screen, I do have a menu. And right now we are looking at the documents tab, but we also have a favorites tab, a search tab, a shared tab, and a marketplace. The favorites tab is where I can locate any document that I have flagged as a favorite. And this would just help me find frequently used documents quicker. The search tab could be helpful if you have a lot of documents to look through. The shared tab is where we can access any shared documents. So there is a little bit of opportunity to collaborate with others. Now I'm jumping back to the Documents tab to start a new document by tapping on the plus sign. And when I do that, I do get a menu with many different options that I can use as a starting point for my document. So I'm tapping Notebook. When I create a new notebook, I get to pick my cover design and the paper template. These can be changed later, so don't worry if you're not sure what you want right away. GoodNotes does give you multiple template options to choose from. They have blank, dotted, lined papers, and then they also have white, cream, and black versions of each of them. They also have some cover designs to choose from, and for both templates, 
You do have the option to choose what size you want the template to be. The options do change slightly depending on what size you pick, but if you're planning to use your documents only on your mobile device and never print them out or anything, all of these sizes are going to look the same on your display screen. So you can choose if you want a template that will print a certain size, and then you can also choose if you want the template to be in landscape or portrait view. I can also change the language settings for each document if I want, and this helps when you use the search options for documents and also recognizing text if you're writing or typing in another language. Once I'm happy with my choices, I can give my notebook a title and then I'll just tap create and my new document opens right up. There are two tabs. I already had the other notebook open previously, which is why it has now become a tab. And the lighter colored tab is always going to be the one that's active. So now let's look at the icons in the top menu. On the left, I do have a back button and then I have an icon that is four squares making a square. And tapping that will show me thumbnails of my pages. This allows me to rearrange them or jump between them without having to flip through a bunch of pages in between. I can also bookmark or favorite pages and add them for quick reference. And I can also make an outline or add a page to an outline, which would act kind of like a table of contents. I can do that as well. And if I want to add a page, I can tap this icon of the paper with the plus sign that is on the right here. I can add a photo as a page or import a PDF document into the notebook. So this is great if you have readings to do or a document you want to highlight or make notes on. You can import it right into your notebook. I can also swipe from the right side of my screen to add a new page after my current page. So if I go back to the thumbnail view, I can now see that I have added another page. And then I can just favorite a page by tapping this bookmark icon on the right side of the menu. And that would end up on the favorites list. And then on the far right, I can tap, there's a three dot menu, which will open up a more menu. This gives me a lot of options. This is where I can add a page to the outline. I can also change the template for the entire notebook, or I can clear a page or even delete it, as well as access settings for palm rejection and using a stylus to write with. My stylus is actually an Apple Pencil, but I would be able to connect other smart styluses using Bluetooth to connect them to my device. To draw or write, I'm going to tap on the icon that looks like a pen with a little squiggle next to it. And when I tap that, the pen is already highlighted. So I can immediately start writing if I want. And I do have a new menu bar pop up just below the other one. And the leftmost icons are my undo and redo icons. And then I have my pen. And with my pen, I can change the ink color on the right side of the menu. There are three places I can set colors to quickly switch between them or if I tap any of those color swatches a second time, it's going to open up color options and then I can choose 
a different color. There are a couple of ways that I can look at the color options and choose my colors here. And then the next one is an eraser icon. And this allows me to clear portions of the page rather than the entire thing. I also have a highlighter in addition to my pen. The highlighter is going to be semi-transparent and I can use it over text on a document or even over my own handwriting or drawing. This app will also help me draw cleaner shapes using this shape tool, which is next on our menu. I can draw a shape and once I finish the shape and connect the ends of the shape, if I just hold my pen there for a second, it's going to magically turn into a nicer version of the same shape. And then I also have a lasso selection tool. So I can select something that I've written or drawn, and then I can move it, resize it, change the color, or do one of these other actions that are listed in this pop-up menu. And the star in the oval icon, this is for working with elements. I can also add photos to my notes by tapping the picture icon. And then the icon with the T is our text styling icon. And you may notice just above that, we have an icon that looks like a keyboard. Both of these icons will allow me to type using either my digital keyboard on the screen or a Bluetooth device that I have connected. The keyboard icon will create a text box that fills the entire screen, whereas the text styling icon will allow me to choose where I want to place the text box and it will expand as I type. And I can access the font and size, color, all of those options from both icons as well. The next icon on my menu bar is a magnifier. It's going to magnify a portion of the page so I can write more precisely. So I won't be able to write in as much space, but it allows me to write much smaller. I can also use my fingers to either pinch in or pinch out to zoom in and out on the page. And then I can write zoomed in if I want and then zoom back out to look at the full page. And then the last icon looks like kind of like a remote control. It allows me to shine a digital pointer on my page. So if I was using my notebook to give a presentation, I could use this option to highlight something on the page and it does show up temporarily and then fades after a few seconds. And then if I go back to my more menu in the upper right corner, I do also have an option to rotate my page. So this would rotate my page not just in the view, but in the notebook itself. Now I'm going to look at more of the pen options. So I will tap the pen icon to select it, and then I can change the thickness of my pen. Right now, the small size is selected. I can choose from small, medium, or large with these icons or I can use the slider if I want to have more control over the size. I can also change the type of pen. I will tap the pen icon again to get a drop down menu. I can choose fountain pen, ballpoint pen, or brush style. And I can also adjust these pen settings for a more customized look. So now the last thing I want to show you is the difference between using a smart stylus like the Apple Pencil 
and a regular stylus that just has a rounded end. So this image, these are the tools that I am going to use. With my Apple Pencil, this is what my handwriting looks like. And this is pretty much what my handwriting does look like when I use a regular pen and paper. Now I'm going to switch the stylus. And I'm using the same pen type, but I do have to disconnect the Apple Pencil to use the regular stylus because of the palm rejection settings. So the regular stylus works very similarly to how the pad of our finger would work. So the palm rejection also rejects the regular stylus. So as I'm writing, you can see that I just don't have as much control of the output on this pen. My writing is much bigger and it's just not as nice. This is why I say that these apps work better with a smart stylus. Obviously, you can use a regular stylus as well. You would want to do some research to decide which one would work best for you. Okay, so the next app we're going to look at today is called Note Ledge. And when I open this app, its homepage looks a lot like the hybrid apps we looked at in our previous video with this left side menu and then the content area workspace on the right. We're looking at sample notes that came with the app when it was downloaded. So I'm just going to tap on the plus sign that is in the bottom right corner to start my note. And then it does give me options to create a new note or import from the cloud. I'm just going to tap the first option and start a new note. This app starts us off with a blank page and it doesn't have as many features as GoodNotes, but it still does have some. So let's take a look at the top right menu. I'm going to start with this circle icon that has dots inside of it. When I tap this, it opens up my paper template options. So there is a tab for portrait or another tab for landscape templates. And it looks like I can choose to apply the template to all of my pages or just one page. When I find one that I like, I'll just tap on it and then I will tap apply in the upper right corner. The more menu on this app gives me options to export or look at my notes as a slideshow. I could use this app to create a presentation and it looks like I can even record audio for the presentation or I can access my help resources from this more menu. The icon with the four squares that make a square is going to let me see a thumbnail view of my note. So very similar to the one in the other app. And I can tap on the plus sign from the thumbnail view to add another page right from here if I want to do that. I can also add another page by tapping the plus sign icon that's here in the menu as well. The last icon lets me export my note and I can make a few choices before I click export. And then to actually get started writing on my note, I'm just gonna tap in the middle of my page and that's going to bring up my toolbar. The first option on the left is text. So that's going to add a text box to my page. And then I can use the digital keyboard or if I had a Bluetooth keyboard, I could use that as well. And I do have formatting options show up just above my digital keyboard. So I would be able to do some formatting if I wanted to. And then selecting a word or portion of the text is going to bring up a pop-up menu with a couple more options as well. 
to get out of the text box and get back to my toolbar, I'll just tap anywhere outside the text box. And our next tool is the brush tool. When I tap on this, I can actually see I do have options that are more than just a brush. I have like kind of a calligraphy pen, a paint roller, a brush pen, more like a, could be a highlighter, or could be just a really thick marker, and then an eraser. And then I do have the option to change the size of the brush stroke and the opacity. And I also have options to change the color of my brush. And then there is a short more menu that looks like it has some palm rejection settings. And then even after I've done some writing or put type on my page, I can still go back and change the page template. So maybe I want it to be landscape and maybe I don't like the notebook look. I can choose another template and then tap apply to activate it. It doesn't move what I have on the page, it just changes the background. And then when I draw shapes, I do not have the magic smart shapes. So my shapes are gonna look like whatever they look like when I draw them. And again, using the regular stylus here, I can't write as small, and I also just don't have quite as much control. And then I can use the eraser to erase a portion of the screen. I can also change the size of the brush stroke of the eraser, so basically the size of the eraser, as well as how light or strong it applies based on the opacity. I can't actually erase the type, so you can't see it, but I did try to erase it and it is still there. Back on our toolbar, I do have the option to insert a photo. I can also insert a video from a few different places. I can add a table to my note. So when I add the table, I can tap into each individual cell and type in it, or I can deselect the table and then use my brush and my stylus to write in each cell. When I do that, it doesn't actually put the writing in the table. It's kind of like one is on top of the other. So then if I go and try to move the table, what is typed is going to move with its cell, but what I've written is kind of just a layer underneath. And then I do have an option to record audio. So when I tap that, I then get a button where I can tap to record and tapping that will give me another pop-up menu with some more options. And it looks like you have to have a pro account to use the stickers, but we can look at them. So this would just be a way to kind of decorate your page with some stickers that are, they look like they're holiday themed mostly. And you could just add them to your page to give it a little more life especially if you don't feel like you're good at drawing. So as you can see, there are many different ways that you can utilize a digital pen and paper app. You can use it for like a digital planner or to make a presentation. You can use it maybe you're taking a class and you want to keep your notes together if you're in a class, if you get a digital reading like a scan or a PDF of a reading to do, 
you can drop that, import it into your document, at least on GoodNotes, and then you'd be able to interact with it and keep it with your other notes. So there are a lot of options. I hope that you have found this video and this series of videos helpful, and we will see you again next time. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure you let us know by following our MCPL 360 page on Facebook and our MCPL MO channel on YouTube. We premiere new videos every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And if you miss the live event, you can always find all of our videos on YouTube on one of our many technology-related playlists on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again next time.